Hello my friends, today we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and uh, GD match results of a Native American individual I12354. Um, this sample has Y-DNA Q, uh, Q1, his mitochondrial lineage is D1J and this individual is from Argentina. Now this individual lived, it looks like in the common era, actually quite uh, quite recently, only five centuries before present, so a very recent sample, just uh, just uh, just around the time that colonization started. So this individual lived around the same period that colonization of Americans began. Uh, this is not a very ancient individual. This is pretty much a modern Native American person. So I think this is this is one of the modern, uh, more or less modern samples that I'm covering on this channel uh, because it's such a modern sample. Um, it's essentially a modern Native American, uh, the genome of a modern Native American individual. Uh, the culture is Sanknam, the culture is named Selknam, North. I'm going to have a trouble pronouncing it. Tierra del Fuego. Uh, Tierra del Fuego. Uh, it's a Spanish, Spanish name. A fuego, I know, means fire. I think so. I think it means fire. Let me look it up. Fuego meaning... Um, that's, that, that's, I want to mean, I want to find out what it means. Yes, it means fire. Okay. So that's what it means. But Tierra del Fuego, I don't know what that means. Um, and it's, it's a Spanish word, Rio de Grande. I know, I know that Rio de Grande means great river. Uh, Rio means river and Grande means great. So it's a great river from Argentina. Uh, now let's first, let me show you what this individual what this Native American individual scores with uh, Eurogene's K36. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't that many calculators for Native Americans specifically to like sp uh, split them apart into like South America versus Central America versus like North America. So they all just kind of score Amerindian. So for this individual, he's scoring 89% Amerindian. Uh, it's very unfortunate that it's very difficult to like, uh, there's no calculators that specifically determine what kind of Native American you are. Like, for example, Amazonian versus Argentinian native. So for him, he's just Amerindian, very, very, uh, very, very vague. Uh, he's also scoring 6% Siberian and some very trace ancestry like Siberian or East Asian Volga Ural. Vol Volga Ural is completely random for him to score. South Chinese, West African, completely random for him to score. French, completely random for him to score. 0.15% North African, completely random for him to score as well. Let's see what this individual scores with my own ethnicity calculator that I developed myself. Um, on the basis of 476 SNPs, this individual is scoring closest to Mongol BGR002, followed by Jomon from Japan, followed by Polynesians, followed by Yakutia Neolithic Yak002, followed by Mongol Das001, followed by Tibetan. Iron Age, followed by Turkic, UGU001, followed by Kazakh, uh, one individual from Kazakhstan, followed by Mongol, ERD001, followed by, followed by Kipchak, Turkic individual. So, looks like this individual is closest to various Central Asians <coughs> with my ethnic calculator. And the closest model, this is very beautiful, guys. This is actually so beautiful. Let me zoom in. Because this is so beautiful, and, and um, I think this will go, go over so many people's heads, but this is very beautiful. The closest model is a mixture of Chinese plus Botai Hunter Gatherer. And the second closest model is a mixture of Korean plus Malta Boy. Like, this will go over so many people's heads, but I think there's going to be that one person in the comments. And I think it's going to be, I think I even know who that's going to be. Uh, who, will re who will recognize this and who will, uh, who will be completely amazed by this. Because it is so, like, it is so vaguely historically precise. Because um, the ethnogenesis of Native Americans is essentially a mixture of uh, something East Eurasian or East Asian-like, plus a mixture of ancient North Eurasian-like admixture, which is which is precisely what you see with my ethnic calculator here. A mixture of something ancient North Eurasian-like, such as Botai hunter-gatherer or Malta boy, plus something East Eurasian-like, such as Korean or Chinese. It's really beautiful, uh, and it's such a vague um, it's such a vague result. But in a in a very vague vague way, you see this being represented in my result with with trade predictor. Uh, it's definitely very interesting that you see this here in this way. Um, there is also Gayet plus Korean, and it's kind of more of the same thing. More, but this is more of a 
Gayet is more of a uh, this is more of an inaccuracy in my opinion, but it's still it's still showing more of the same trend, like a mixture of West Eurasian plus uh, plus East Asian admixture for Native Americans. Okay, let's close this down. Let's see what he scores for Nasha code calculator results when it comes to phenotype and traits. I should reset the scale. Yes. So it looks like this individual has got darkest brown eyes, definitely very, very dark eye color. <laughs> looks like this individual has got black hair color, very, very dark hair color. Looks like this individual has got light brown skin. Uh, looks like this individual has got straight hair and... Um, looks like this individual actually does not have BH2 or 3 or 1, but he does have one light color variant here, which is very, very interesting. Uh, and surprising, because this is very predictive of BH2. So, once again, this is not something you would expect a Native American to have, but they do have light color variants in, in these variations at low frequencies. So, um, once again, they do have these blue eye, um, blue eye alleles at low frequencies. Uh, they are found in Native Americans, so you will you will find some ancient samples from Native Americans with some of these blue eye alleles in BH two, three, four, not in three. Actually, I'm I'm talking out of my ass a little bit. Not in three, not here, but two and one, and not in four either. Not here either, but two and one. You will find uh, some light color variants in Native Americans, like these three variations. You will find Native Americans with light color variants here. <clears throat> So, uh, when it comes to SLC 45A2, looks like he does not have any light color, light color variants in these variations, but he does have two light color variants here. For SLC 24A5, no light color variants here. Uh, for light pigmentation of skin. And for Keto G, looks like no light color variants in either of these two variations. Uh, for MC1R, no light color variants anywhere, so he is not predisposed to being ginger. Very, very interesting. All right, let's see the. Um, phenotype oracle what phenotypes this individual matches closest and looks like the closest phenotype match for him is this very interesting phenotype I'm not sure if it's like a Native American phenotype or uh, Southeast Asian or it's kind of it's kind of like Filipino I think or I don't know maybe Native American as well there's Native Americans who look like this there's there's like Hispanics who look like this there's Southeast Asians who look like this it's just like a general like b brown brown like south south southern brown phenotype whatever this the second one is definitely an uh, an southeast asian slash maybe even like japanese phenotype and this one on the, on the bottom is i think an east asian phenotype that that he scores but this is the furthest and this right here is the closest so for the for the mixtures for the phenotype mixtures the closest mixture is a mixture of Half this plus half this. Second closest mixture is half this plus half this. Third closest mixture is half this plus half this. Very, very interesting. <laughs> very interesting model. Now let's move on to the biomarkers panel results for this individual. Looks like he's got very high levels of vitamin D. That's definitely really good to see. Looks like he's got above average level of LDL cholesterol, below average level of HDL cholesterol, which is kind of unfortunate. Above average level of glucose, above average level of hemoglobin, a average level of high, of average level of blood pressure, below average level of iron in the blood, so definitely doesn't have hemochromatosis. Good to see. Below average level of sex hormone binding globulin, a slightly below average level of red blood cell count in blood. So the only thing we really that's really stands out standing out from this result is the uh, very very high uh, level of uh, vitamin D in the, in the blood. Let's see the polygenic risk scores real quick. So it looks like he's got a high predisposition to Tourette's, a very high predisposition to epilepsy, a average predisposition to asthma, a slightly above average predisposition to leukemia, a slightly above average predisposition to vitiligo, a high predisposition to myopia, a slightly above average predisposition to primary biliary cirrhosis, a below average predisposition to stroke, a very low predisposition to male pattern hair loss, which is not so surprising because Native Americans tend to conserve their hair. It's very typical for Native Americans to uh, not go bold. So a uh, Native American who doesn't uh, doesn't go bold is no surprise to anybody. Uh, slightly above average odds for atrial fibrillation. Slightly below average odds for deep vein thrombosis. Slightly above average odds for bipolar type 1. Slightly above average odds for schizophrenia. Looks like slightly above average odds for type 2 diabetes. Looks like slightly above average odds for Alzheimer's. Looks like slightly below average odds for multiple sclerosis. 
four variants for t breast cancer out of 10, uh, which is kind of high. Eight variants for testicular cancer out of 18, and v a lot of risk variants in keto G gene, so kind of cooked when it comes to testic testicular cancer risk. Uh, celiac disease, no risk variants for that, really good to see. No risk variants for GSS either, really good to see. Free risk variants for Crohn's disease out of 22, which is really good to see. Once again, Reifenstein syndrome, no risk variants for that, really good to see. Parkinson's disease, no risk variants for that, really good to see. Gilbert syndrome, risk variants, no risk variants for that, really good to see. And basal cell carcinoma, no risk variants for that, really good to see. So the only thing we really, really have to watch out for, it seems, is the um, the risk score for, I think it was epilepsy. Epilepsy is really high. And uh, what else? I think it was uh, it was it was testicular cancer. Testicular cancer is really high as well. The risk score for that as well. But testicular cancer is not that big of a deal because there's also like environmental factors that that play a role. And these environmental factors have a lot to do with like modern diets and modern modern uh, lifestyle that weren't a thing back in the day. So let's let's go through the monogenic traits and see what we come up with here. So it looks like this individual has got warrior origin type in comet, warrior origin type in MAOA. So definitely more of a intermediate uh, speed of dopamine reuptake, intermediate between warrior and warrior. Uh, looks like he's got intermediate number of dopamine to receptor sites in the brain as well. Looks like he's got um, short form 5-HTC LPR, no, no dwarfism, not a dwarf. Very interesting. It looks like he's got higher odds of autism. Very interesting to see. Looks like he's got lower levels of empathy, which is once again quite typical for all of the East Eurasian derived people. Like East Asians, Native Americans, they all tend to have lower levels of empathy as a general rule. Uh, especially if you take into account gen uh, genotypes in OXTR region. It's just a general trend that uh, East Asians and Native Americans, various people with East Eurasian ancestry tend to have lower levels of empathy. Um, that's just kind of how it is. I'm not sure why. Uh, when it comes to hemochromatosis, not a carrier for C2A2Y hemochromatosis mutation. Really good to see. Multiple sclerosis, no risk variance of multiple sclerosis in the HLA gene. Really good to see. For cardiovascular disease risk looks like he's got higher odds of cardiovascular issues based on this panel right here but uh we also have to take into account the apob gene panel let's scroll down to it actually looks like he's got zero risk variance for apob gene panel and that's really good to see so uh that kind of mitigates the risk for for the cardiovascular issues panel a little bit but we ha we also have to take into account the validity a little bit so we have for the apob risk panel we have two total two totals so the validity for that is a little bit low so you want to have higher amount of variance in total to increase the validity. So for the cardiovascular disease panel, we have a lot of variance here. So that definitely increases the validity of that a little bit. So um, this probably this probably has a little bit of a, a, li a little bit more validity in in the result. So actually, this individual does indeed have higher odds of cardiovascular issues when you take every, everything into account. <coughs> When it comes to genotype in EDAR, this individual has got um, two East Asian alleles in EDAR, so definitely quite East Asian uh, facial morphology, and uh, decreased odds of protruding nasal bridge, more upturned nose shape, uh, larger nose shi larger nose size, uh, lar longer mid face length, higher nas nasolabial angle, which means nose pointing up, so upward pointing nose and uh, upturned nose and larger nose size. Definitely quite an um, interesting nose shape. And thicker eyebrows, definitely very interesting face shape as well. So this does play, all these variations play a role in the predicted uh, facial appearance in the, in the morphology page right here. All of these um, SNPs play a role in the predicted, in the predicted uh, appearance for the morphology. So, yeah, this individual does not have micropenis. This individual does not have impaired muscle performance. Actually, this individual does have impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete rather than strength or power athlete. He does not have 40 sneeze, sneeze reflex. This individual has... Uh, for for EDAR, I have, I, my program looks for two genotypes in EDAR, and for both of them, this individual has East Asian genotype, typical East Asian genotype. For um, risk of heart failure due to beta blocker medications. This individual has got really good genotype, very much below the average, really good to see. For alcoholism, the risk for alcoholism is pretty much essentially average, really good to see as well. Um, okay, for leukemia panel, looks like this pretty much typical stuff, typical risk. Okay, for rare diseases and traits panel, looks like no risk variance for, for San Filippo, really good to see. 
Um, but he does have this gene type, which greatly increases the risk of rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, I want to see his risk score for HLA panel because, yep, so for HLA, HLA panel, he's doing really good. He's got lower odds of autoimmune disease. That's really good to see. For muscular dystrophy myopathies, he's actually got one risk allele for muscular dystrophy myopathies in this variation. Let's look it up. Let's see what uh, what that converts to. What that, yep. Okay, so it's the risk allele here is not that uncommon. I see this co quite frequently, and uh, I do see this quite frequently. Interesting. So it's not that big of a deal, I think, having a risk variant in this variation. For color blindness panel, he does not have any risk variants for color blindness, so that's really good to see. For FTO gene panel, it looks like he does not have any predisposition to obesity, so he's definitely quite skinny. Uh, he does have GG in this variation, which leads to highest odds of obesity, which is also a very uncommon genotype, so that's quite interesting. But he has all of the genotypes for reduced risk of obesity, so overall, he's probably not very predisposed to obesity. For syncope panel, based on... Uh, based on... Quite a lot of SNPs. I don't really. Wow. I think there's a glitch. Um, there's a glitch in the calculation because there is no 476 SNPs. So yeah, there, there's a glitch in the cal in the calculation that I haven't identified so far. But his syncopy risk is quite a little bit above average. Very interesting. For bio trades panel, it looks like he's got um, dry ear wax, no body odor, likely East Asian ancestry. So he's got so many East Asian facial traits and East Asian genetic traits that it's definitely very interesting. He's quite, uh, he's he's got a lot of East Asian gen genetic uh, genetic traits like EDAR, no dry ear wax, no body odor. Um, he's he's just very East Asian in terms of distinctly East Asian genetic traits. It's very interesting. One copy of Hunter Gatherer's CLT CL1 gene variant and one copy of the Farmer variant. Inter intermediate ability to process carbs and sugars. The Farmer allele is C. Um, okay, very interesting. And for blood group panel, it looks like his predicted blood type is type O, the most common blood type. And type A blood type is a little bit less, less, more likely for him. Most likely his blood type is type O. So that's most, that's, uh, kind of the prediction for him. That's the result for him. Well, thanks for watching until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Um, of course you can download the file in 23 me format from link, which is in the description of the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. This was the result of a Argentinian native with my trade predictor. And you can download my program from itch. You can buy it from itch for only $13. I do suggest you do it because the price is going to go up. And I'm as I'm making updates and I'm adding new things, the price uh, is going to drastically go up on May 22nd. And... Um, when I say drastically, I mean drastically. I'm talking about like $25 to $30 increase in price. So do I do suggest you buy it while it's so cheap. But um, thanks for watching until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe, share, and goodbye.